I'm Ryan Lightfoot Brown of Fun Calibre. We're joined today by Peter Elston, the elite rated manager of the Seneca Diversified Income Fund. Thank you for joining us, Peter. Thanks, Ryan. Peter, the investment process of your concept, something you uh, introduced to the fund when you joined in sort of 2014, 2015. Could you just talk us through the investment process, please? Sure. Uh, I was brought in uh, to the company five years ago, nearly five years ago. Um, shortly after the company had been acquired um, by a group of essentially northwestern based entrepreneurs and they were looking at turning this small business in, in Liverpool into something bigger. So they went about putting some uh, key, key people in, in place and, and that included me and as you say I put a, a new process in place having worked previously for two very large firms where process was was drummed into us. Uh, that's what I did for Seneca, put a, a, a new clearly articulated process uh, in place. Uh, I should just say that um, it, is a, it is a team effort, there's five of us, um, and um, the reality is that uh, I don't actually run the income fund, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort um, uh, amongst the five of us and, and specifically there's two of my colleagues who are the what we call the oversight managers and that's uh, Richard Parfect and, and Tom Delick. And your process is uh, sort of value orientated. Uh, given stock markets very high um, in investment terms and bonds are deemed to be quite expensive as well, where and how are you finding any sort of value opportunities today? Well that's a, a very good question. Uh, 20, 30 years ago for a, a balanced fund that was made up of equities and bonds, you could rely on bonds to provide very decent returns. Um, yield, bond yields were very high, uh, inflation was falling, uh, and so you'd get returns from bonds every year in the order of seven, eight, nine percent. Things are very different now. Um, not only are our yields very low, but the possibility is that inflation uh, might rise rather than fall. And that's not a great environment for bonds. It just means that they're very expensive. So the question is, well, if you can't rely on bonds, where can you uh, look for, for value? And uh, you know, I suppose there's two options. Either you, you put everything into equities, which is, is not a, a very sensible idea for, uh, uh, for someone who's saving for retirement, um, but there are uh, actually interesting alternatives to, to bonds and we call them specialist assets and these are essentially uh, UK listed investment trusts investing in illiquid assets like uh, property, uh, infrastructure, uh, aeroplanes, um, other assets uh, that uh, can be intangible like uh, music royalties. Uh, and these uh, instruments, these trusts actually can give you very decent yields that you can't get from bonds. They can actually give you income streams that are pretty stable like bonds, but also they can give you some inflation uh, protection. Um, a lot of the income streams are actually either explicitly or, or implicitly linked to inflation. So you're getting all of these interesting features that uh, you can't get from bonds and that can help to, to bring uh, an extra dimension of, of return to, to balanced portfolios. And also you've, um, you've recently added gold to the portfolio gold funds. Um, why have you done that? Well, I suppose it, in some ways it relates to what we've just been talking about in, in terms of bonds being very expensive. Uh, bonds are supposed to be safe haven uh, investments, but they're no longer safe because yields are so low. So you have to look for safety elsewhere. Now, the investment trusts that I mentioned um, uh, can give you an element of safety, but gold is another area where you can find sort of safe haven features. Uh, there's two ways in which we've invested in gold. One is uh, through a, a gold miners fund, uh, a fund that invests in the, the companies that mine gold. And we've also invested in a fund that buys physical gold. Both of these give you slightly different return profiles, 
but both are linked to this uh, central idea that gold is actually a good safe haven asset at a time when either other things are expensive or when we might be approaching the end of the cycle uh, and where where we might need some um, sort of defensiveness in our in our funds okay. and have you made any other uh, changes to the funds recently one thing that um, we've been doing over the last well getting on for two and a half years is to gradually reduce our our equity exposure and this relates to our central belief that we are gradually approaching the end of the cycle. We must remember that this cycle has been a very long one. Uh, it's, it's now getting on for 10 years uh, long and that's much longer than, than average. And, and so the chances are that you know, the downturn, the next downturn is, is getting quite close. I don't know exactly when it's gonna happen, but there are signs that uh, things might be slowing down and there's other uh, what you call recession indicators that are starting to flash orange. Um, but in preparation for the end of that cycle, we've gradually been reducing the the fund's uh, equity weights. And, and the idea there is that you need to prepare early and, and it's a bit like driving a car. When do you brake? Do you brake when you get to the bend or as you approach it? And, and of course, it's sensible to, to gradually uh, break as you as you approach the bend and that's that's exactly what we're doing with with asset allocation and you've had a really good start to the year where we stand um, today if you do this interview in May you've gone up nearly eight percent since January mm -hmm. um, what has done particularly well why have you performed so well well uh, confession time we've been lucky uh, and uh, you know like any good sports team um, you'll you'll always have some good luck and other times you'll have bad luck but the the returns that you talk about have been uh, due to a little bit of good luck we've had a holding called uh, AJ Bell mm -hmm. and uh, we held that as a private company for many years um, and then in December it was listed and since listing it's it's performed extremely well uh, and uh, and so that's added uh, quite a sizable a, a chunk to to the performance not the only reason but certainly that's that's the reason why our fund probably stands apart from from our peers and how do you see the rest of the year planning out is there anything you're worried about sort of us and china trade tan mm. uh, sanctions as a concern maybe brexit well geopolitics is always something that is uh, going to affect markets uh, it's harder to predict what's going to happen on that front than it is when it comes to economics because with economics you have this thing called the business cycle which um, in the real world isn't quite as uh, neat as it is in the in the textbooks but nonetheless you can um, do a decent job of identifying where you are on the business cycle uh, and I think we are really now approaching the end of of the cycle and and that's I think that's what's starting to to really concern me that um, you know you've seen the Federal Reserve say that they won't increase interest rates anymore um, I think they'd quite like to be able to increase interest rates uh, after having paused for a little bit but I suppose there's a good chance that actually the next move in interest rates is down and that'll be associated with some sort of uh, global downturn. Well, Peter, that's been really interesting. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Ryan. And for more information on the Seneca Diversified Income Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com.